Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in our Palo Alto studios. The conference season is just about ready to take off, so we still have some time to get some CUBE conversations in before we hit the road and spend the next several days and weeks and months in Las Vegas, Orlando, and points on the compass. So we're excited to have our next guest. Uh, she's Lynn Lucas, CUBE alumni, CMO of Cohesity. Lynn, great to see you again. Jeff, super to be here for the first time in Palo Alto. Yeah, how do you like the studio? I love it. It's a little different than the than the vibe at the conferences, a but quieter a little than quieter. the conferences. But I like it. Good, good. Well, welcome. So, you have uh, relatively recently joined a new company, Cohesity. Um, so, congratulations Thanks. on that. Yeah. And just curious, one, give us just a quick overview on Cohesity. But more importantly, what did you see that attracted you to get you to join? Great, yeah, so Cohesity just joined at the beginning of January, having a blast. And really what I saw that attracted me to Cohesity was three things. Uh, it's an incredible founder, Mohit Aaron, who was formerly the CTO and co-founder of Nutanix, called the father of hyperconvergence, and before that, the lead developer at Google File System. And he really is doing what a lot of uh, Silicon Valley is known for, which is he took a step back and is looking at this space in the data center that we call secondary data, backup, archive, replication, test dev, analytics, and said, you know what? The world doesn't need a, a better point solution. We need to take a step back and really look at how this gold mine of data can be used in a much more efficient way because data is, after all, what's powering uh, the world's businesses and their differentiation. So the technology, Mohit himself is a founder, and then it's just an incredible startup culture. It's fast growing, we're having fun every day. I love going to work. It's amazing, I, I just do some background, you guys have raised $160 million. Uh, dollars, the, the list of leadership and board and advisory is pretty amazing. It's like a who's who from this industry. So he pulled together a hell of a team. He really has. And you know, Carl Eschenbach, former COO right. of VMware is on our board. Cube alumni, Patrick Rogers. It, it, Rob alumni. Salmon. Yeah, we can go on the, and on. Yes, NetApp, uh, Dan Warmanhoven, Google Ventures has invested, Sequoia. Uh, I think uh, Sequoia said we're the fastest growing company in their portfolio. Uh, we grew 600% year over year last year, 40-50% uh, growth in new customers every quarter, because uh, there's just such a pent up demand to really solve uh, some of the problems that haven't been addressed over the last really couple of decades for the inefficiencies and in how all of this uh, data for these secondary workloads is managed. Right, so you got an interesting graphic on, on the website talking about secondary data um, and that it's really the, the ugly part of the iceberg below the water, significantly bigger, heavier, and more expensive to manage than the primary data. So I wonder if you can take us into that a little bit deeper. How did it get to be such a problem and why is this new approach a better way to, to, uh, to attack that problem? It, sure, and an iceberg is really kind of a good metaphor when you think about the data center. You know, we've got our production applications, primary storage, and that's what's floating above the water, and we see that 20%, but below is another 80%. And according to most uh, industry analysts, IDC, Gartner, that represents not just 80% of the data, but 80% of the cost. On average, IDC says every uh, organization has 12 to 14 copies of each piece of data. And that happens because what's um, grown up over time is point solutions for all the various workloads. You've got one set of uh, hardware and software for backup, you've got yet another set uh, for test dev, you've got another set for analytics. There's been no sharing of the data, there's no single infrastructure knowing even, or operations knowing what you have and being able to tell you where the inefficiencies are. And so you think about uh, a developer in a retail or a bank organization, they're requesting a copy of a data to develop the new applications. That copy gets instantiated. They do their work, never gets erased. Just right, like in our right, consumer life, do right. you ever erase photos off your phone? I, I can't tell you how many copies and copies and copies, because it's because it's often, it's they figure it's easy right. just to make another copy just in case, right? Exactly, so then you know that never goes away and then you've got yet another copy for the next time they need an updated set. And so this has been multiplying and it creates uh, this an incredible um, expense to maintain and operate. 
and it also creates a lot of risk these days for organizations because of new regulations like GDPR. Right. Where are all Where those copies data? of personal information from EU citizens? People don't even know anymore. Right, right. Um, and then there's you know two other big factors that have come into play in, in, in recent years, in a software defined um, and public cloud. Two really big, huge uh, tidal waves of change that were not accommodated in prior architectures. So you guys obviously saw that opportunity glommed on and, and are now offering something that, that can take care of the different uh, types of needs based on what type of infrastructure you need, really not at a company level, but really at the application or the workload level, right? Yeah, so I think it's a great point, and I won't claim any credit for this. This is Mohit and his team of, of developers, and really, as you pointed out, what do we see organizations looking for now? They now realize that, hey, if I can get a software-defined platform, a lot of commodity hardware does a really good job for me, and I want to have that flexibility uh, to choose you know, what vendor I might be using. So Mohit developed a software-defined platform that addresses how do you bring all of these data and these workloads together in one platform so I can have a consistent set of infrastructure and a consistent operational model and because of his heritage, working at Google, being one of the lead developers for Google File System, it comes with this cloud first mentality. So this is not a bolt on with a gateway to get to Amazon or get to Azure. Right. This is a software platform that natively understands and spans both your private cloud and your on-premises data center and the public cloud. So it gives an IT organization the flexibility to choose how do I want to use the public cloud with my private data center and not have to think really about kind of that plumbing below, right. below the water line anymore. Because, because there is no either or, right? It's really workload specific, where that particular workload lives and the storage that supports that, that yeah. workload. Yeah, so, so let me be specific about what Cohesity offers. Uh, it's software defined and we offer a appliance uh, so that it's very easy for an organization to go in and say, you know what, data protection, backup, frankly, legacy architectures built 20 years ago before the advent of the cloud, biggest pain point that we see right now, can move uh, in a cohesity, hyper-converged appliance and solve that problem and gain massive business benefits right away. Um, we offer global deduplication, um, very advanced compression, erasure coding, and we have customers that are telling us that they're seeing eight to one, 10 to one, even 14 to one ratios uh, that really then give them 14 to one ratio and a reduction of yeah. capacity to, to store the same amount of stuff versus from some of the current customer or current uh, vendors that they have been using from what I would call these legacy right, architectures. Right, that's pretty significant. So they're getting an amazing <laughs> storage efficiency. Um, and then they often next say, wow, um, I'd like to give uh, my developers the flexibility of spinning this up in the cloud. So we offer a cloud edition that allows them to choose whether they want to operate on Azure, on Amazon, on Google Cloud, and be able to move that data into the cloud, use it for a test dev instance, um, but again, all under the same software interface, all looks like one operating system, no bolt-on gateway to manage. Right. And so then they get the, it, oh, I'm then, sorry, good. And I was going to say, and the third part is many organizations obviously have remote offices, branch offices, right. so there's a virtual edition right. too. So I'm just curious on the cloud side. So Andy Jassy's been on a ton of times, great guy. Yes. You know, one of the, the promises of cloud is spin up what you need and spin down when you right. don't. As you just said, nobody ever spins anything down. Mm -hmm. um, so are you seeing customers have the same type of, of, of economic impact in managing their storage that's in the public clouds because now they're actually spinning down what they don't need or consolidating more efficiently? Yeah, so I think that we've seen in general in the industry that if you likened the, the data center had been maybe kind of a messy garage where there was a lot of things in the garage and weren't really sure what it was, a lot of folks, I would say five plus years ago, like kind of ran to the cloud because it was clean and new, and you know, it was like that new shiny right, storage right, box, right. you know, that you see 
parked on people's driveways sometimes and then realize that there can be a lot of expense because you're really replicating in the cloud some of these same silos if you're not careful. Right. Um, we're going to help customers avoid that. I think customers are much more sophisticated now than say five years ago, and they're now looking at what's the best way for me to incorporate public cloud. Right. So really common use case right now would be what I, I mentioned before, test dev, let's move something there, get the benefit of the compute, do some analytics on it, build uh, some new application, maybe it gets spun down after that. Uh, but another really common use case is a lot of organizations worried about disaster recovery, um, bringing the cloud in as their second site, mm. because that's a very efficient way for them to do that and not build yet another on-premises data center. Silo. Yeah. So, so the company's been around, uh, the A round was 2013, you're coming in as a CMO, you're brand new and fresh, what's your charter? You know, you didn't come in at a low level, you came in with the C, what are you excited about? What, you know, again, why did they bring you in and what are you going to bring to the table and what are your priorities for the rest of 2018 and beyond? I, I still can't believe we're a, a quarter of the way through <laughs> yes, 2018. We are. We're going to be at those shows pretty soon, aren't <laughs> we? I know, they're coming. They are. So I'm here really to build on the good work that the team has done and I'm just really thrilled to be at the company. I think what my charter is, is to continue the company's expansion. So they've seen tremendous growth uh, and in fact, we've just uh, really launched into Asia. Uh, so we now have a large sales presence in Australia and New Zealand and we're going to continue to expand into the rest of Asia. Um, significantly expanded in Europe as well recently. So part of my charter is to bring uh, the marketing programs to all of these new regions and in general to up our awareness level. I think Cohesity has an incredible opportunity to really be one of those companies that changes the data center landscape. Right. Uh, and I want to make sure the world knows about uh, the incredible benefits the customers are seeing um, already with us and do that in a way that uh, really features the customer voice. I've been on theCUBE before, I talked about that. Right. For me, that is all about ensuring that the customer voice is really front and center and so hopefully we'll bring a Cohesity customer here. Good, well and I just want to ask you kind of from a, from a marketing professional and B2B, business, it, it's a really challenging time in terms of, of the scarcity now is not information, which it used to be, now the scarcity is in attention. Um, and people can get a lot of information before they ever make it to your website mm -hmm. within peer groups and hopefully watching some CUBE interviews, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious to get your perspective from, from a, a, a chief marketing officer. How are you kind of looking at the challenges of, of getting the message out? Mm -hmm. It's a really different world than it was years and years ago. People yeah. aren't reading white papers so much, and you know, it's, it's a different challenge. Yeah, it, and it's part of the fun actually in being in marketing, and being in marketing in tech, because a lot of that cool technology for marketing is invented right here in the Valley too. So, you know, I think that word of mouth still actually plays an incredible role and it is that customer voice, um, but bringing that out uh, in ways that are accessible for customers. You and I know we're all very ADD, very right. time sliced, and so those small moments on social media where you can feature um, bits of information that get people's attention. Um, in fact, we're running something right now which I think um, has a lot of legs because at the end of the day, I'm selling to a human, right? Right. right. So we've got B2B monikers, but at the end of the day, folks are, you know, uh, people that laugh, they cry, they right. want to have fun. Right. So we're running a break up with your legacy backup campaign right now and I encourage uh, the audience to go check it out. It's pinned on our Twitter feed at Cohesity. But it pokes a little bit of fun um, at how you might break up with your older vendor. Right. And uh, that's a moment that we think captures folks' attention and gets them interested so that maybe they do want to move down and right read the, the white process. paper and so forth. So I look to do that through combinations of just uh, you know bringing out Cohesity's incredible voice 
um, our customer voice and then sharing it on social because that's the way people really get their information right. these days. It's just, it is really interesting because I think the, the, the voice of the customer or the trusted referral is actually probably more valuable now because it's just a different problem. Before I couldn't get information, so that was a good valuable sort. Now it's really that person is my trusted filter because I have too much information right. I can't I can't take it in. So that, that continues to be that trusted filter and conduit so I could just focus on my peers and not necessarily try to read everything that comes out. Exactly, you know, so as an example, Manhattan Associates is one of Cohesity's customers and we've been super thrilled to be able to feature them um, you know, through social, through our website, um, and let them talk about the benefits of moving to the platform and, and what uh, they've seen. Uh, and you know, uh, I hate to say it, uh, but Gartner as well uh, continues to be an incredible uh, influence on most organizations, and, uh, but we're pleased to say that our customers chose Cohesity and we won the Gartner Peer Insights for data center backup software uh, just about a month ago. So that again is another example of customers looking at uh, the options that they have in voting uh, with their voice and we'll continue to drive that uh, message out in the variety of, of ways and hopefully get people engaged so that they can see that there really is a completely different way of managing your secondary data and getting a lot better efficiencies and a lot lower costs. Yeah, well, good, good, exciting times, challenging times, the, the old marketing uh, mantra, right? I, I, half of my marketing budget's wasted, I just don't know which half. So, <laughs> you, you know, you got to cover all your bases from the old school gardener to the new school, having some fun and some comedy. Well, then, really uh, fun to sit down and, and spend a few minutes and get deeper into the cohesity story. Likewise, thank you, and I'll be seeing you in Orlando, Vegas, and those oh other points my goodness. on the compass. All right. She's Lynn Lucas, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE from the Palo Alto Studios. Great to see you, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.